What's going on, y'all? So, in this video, I just want to quickly uh, talk about the synthesis of enology and uh, the Jyotish or the Vedic numerology and the synthesis of it. As I study these two sciences, I begin to kind of separate them into option A or option B as to which one is, uh, I guess, the better one to say which, like I've said before, neither one of them is necessarily better than the other. But, um, when I, and I almost leaned on the side of, of the Vedic or the Jyotish numerology, but, um, I was listening to another book about enology, and listening to that book I think I came into the number seven and it was just spot on as far as that type of person the char their characteristics and um, and everything it was just spot on and then that's when it kind of hit me that hey um, instead of option A or option B pick option C which is both Synthesizing enology and joytish numerology is a great way, I think, to really get the depth of um, use of these tools. You know, like you wouldn't, you wouldn't say, "Hey, I got a flathead screwdriver and a Phillips head." But because I think the Phillips head is better, I'm going to get rid of all of my flat heads. And then that time comes when you need that, that flat head and you don't have it because you got rid of it. So I'm going to be using both. And Enology is uh, somewhat integrated into Joytish numerology in that the psychic number, which is based on your day of birth, is your enology number, basically. But the depth that the Joytish numerology adds to the equation is the interacting of the numbers that I think is one of it's almost like the seasoning in the recipe kind of like the wings of the enology number now I just do want to say this before I get into my next point let me not lose my next point. My next point is uh, the interaction of the numbers. But before I go there, I think it's important because sometimes I think when we get too much information, we have a tendency to get overwhelmed. So I think it's good to take it one number at a time. Like I heard this described this way. Um, Genealogy course that I'm currently enrolled in that is better to be in a forest with a path than to be in a forest with no path. So I think it's important to just get on a path if you have no path at all, which would be your genealogy number. And in a Joytish or the Vedic numerology, your psychic number. Like, let's just get familiar with that path 
before we start moving into all these other paths. Um, because you are all the paths. And I can clearly see that um, through, through my study and just through reflection that I'm all the past. My fault, y'all. These bugs is out here loving me right now. They loving on me. <laughs> uh, um, if you haven't got outside today, get outside. Get your feet in the dirt. Get some sunlight. Get some fresh air. Um, right, so yeah, start with that. Start with just your basic ideology path that's calculated by adding your birthday together until you get to a single digit, and then um, you can move forward in that path. Um, if you need to know more about that path, I have other videos on my channel that go into each path. I actually have to, uh, one of my videos I put on private, I have to, I have to redo it because it wasn't accurate. So anyway, right, going into my next point, the interaction of the numbers is very important. Um, in a Jesus, you'll learn this early on, just from studying the numbers, that even and odd numbers are different. The interaction of even and odd numbers are different. Some numbers are enemies of other numbers, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. The numbers that are friends aren't necessarily always a good thing. Let's just take uh, the... I don't know if I'm using this word correctly, but it just came up. The moniker um, opposites attract. And the same poles. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Push push away at each other, detract. Or they, they, they don't come together. So um, let's take, uh, gosh, this, forgive me y'all, I'm still, I'm still studying. But like, let's just take for instance, two sixes, right? It was either two sixes or two fours. I think I'm on a number four actually. But when they come together, when certain numbers come together, they tend to, they tend to be so friendly that nothing act actually gets done. Like nothing actually gets done because these two just come together and and they don't provide any opposition to each other. So nothing can move forward versus where you might have two opposites, opposite numbers. And the opposite numbers can even have caveats. You know, you could have the dragon's head and the dragon's tail, or uh, one number could be strong in um, Rahu, another number could be strong in Ketu. And because of that, those opposite poles, they actually work well together. And they complement each other. So knowing things like that, I think it also adds another element to genealogy. You know, um, in which certain numbers, when they come together, work well with others based on some of those ideas of opposites attracting and... Uh, same numbers repelling each other. Repelling, that's the word I was looking for. So, uh, just all that to say is Joytish numerology and enneology are a great synthesis, and I think using them together are great tools to um, not only get on a path or reveal the path because that's all these tools do is they just they're just they just reveal what's already there like man i uh was listening to uh because i'm a number nine in ideology psychic number nine in the joytish and but this particular book i was listening to was on ideology and the downsides of the number nine 
for the challenges of the number nine because it isn't necessarily a downside it's just challenges you know um had you know they they shined a light on some parts of myself that i rather would not have looked at or that i would want to ignore due, due to the fact that after seeing them i would have to face them you know i would have to deal with them those ugly parts of ourselves that we don't want to deal with or even some that we're aware of but uh, once that light gets shined, gets shined on them, it's kind of like a criminal get, getting caught. Like you caught. There's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. The light's been shined on you. You have to get dealt with. Um, and another thing I really like the joy, about the joyish numerology is the different ways to deal with these challenges. You know, you got... You got things like some things I'm still looking into as far as like how to actually practically use them, like the yantras. Um, there's crystals, there's gemstones, gemstone powders. Uh, in the ideology, it goes into certain foods you should or should not eat. So you have all these tools to deal with these things. You have a you have a whole toolbox here. That's how I'm looking at these these things as just tools tools to uh, bring myself into balance and alignment um, and you'll also start to have more empathy for those around you you'll start to understand more why people do the things that they do and it, uh, it, uh, by you understanding and having these tools be able to have more empathy for them uh, and more empathy for yourself you know you won't be so hard on yourself you know when you see that it's just certain ways that you're built for a purpose you know to be able to uh, come into the highest version of yourself all right so that's all I wanted to share today um go ahead click that subscribe button click that uh that notification bell so you can be alerted when i post more videos because we're going to be taking this journey together and um i'm in this boat just like you are and it's my hope that we can use these tools to bring ourselves into balance and alignment wholeness and balanced vibrations everyone Talk to y'all later.